What, what do you do with your what days, man? Um, it's a mix of things, like, you know, working on some hobbies. Uh, the mind is a very powerful thing. I mean, I started two companies from scratch that ended up being worth a lot. So, you know, there's definitely, you know, where there's a will, there's a way. So you know you can so do you anything. you can do anything. Absolutely, man. I think everyone here could start a very successful company tonight if they put their mind to it. Like, how do you go like, about financing it and getting it off? It's crazy. Track. It's it's an adventure. You know, it's the only way you can look at it. You first of all, it, it only costs it only like a hundred dollars to get to no LC. No it doesn't matter what it costs. The point is, the point is, it's it's an adventure, and you know, you gotta yeah. think of it like like trying to get level eighty on World of Warcraft. <laughs> It's funny, you know, a lot of people think investors is the hardest part. It's really not. There's an infinite amount of people who are trying to make lots of money. Uh, infinite. Yeah. And the stock market's the easiest way to access them. Before you go to the stock market, of course, you need money from some other source. And again, there's still an infinite amount of money out there. The, there's a shortage of great ideas. There's a shortage of courageous people. There's a shortage of of uh, focused people. There's a shortage of experienced people. That's what's rare. Uh, capital is plentiful. There's unlimited amounts of it. Um, so uh, I think people is maybe the hardest part. You've got to find a team. Uh -huh. You know, a lot of people think it's a solo game. It really isn't. I mean, it's there's nothing more important than your squad. Um, you know, even if you're the best, you know, at what you do and you're the best idea person, like you really, you really need the best squad you can you can find, and these are, have to be ride or die soldiers. You know they can't be. Um, yeah, you need the hardest neighbors you can find, people who will go to work, OGs that will go to work. We get a uh, we get artists. We get artists. Put you can be a great artist. Be a great artist, and it's still and it's hard still to like hard network. network. Well, that could be a little bit more of a solo game, but building a company. Definitely. You need, you need people who are ready to to roll, ready to die for soldiers. you. And that's not easy to find, man. When you say ready to like, work all day and all night. You know? Like you're building, you're like building, you're building, a, brand, you're building right? a brand, right? In, in, in one way or another. Like you're building a brand that you can, that you, that you, build, you build, 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 build reputation among reputation people among where they trust you and begin to expect a certain Absolutely. Absolutely. You're... Your colleagues have to even in yeah, even, even in, in art, even like I know I make music for I make music for like, a living, but like man, living, but like, man you're doing what Doug did. He's asking about entrepreneurship to a guy who's actually built large companies, and you're talking about art because <laughs> you because you do you do art, so you're trying to like take his question, which is pretty specific, about like how to build companies. That's a square peg, and you're stuffing it into your round hole because you really want to answer the question on no. your expertise. No. I don't think so. I'm, I, don't I don't think, think I'm an expert. I don't think I'm an expert, dude. Like if I'm right, like if I'm but like I'm telling lots of stories, and you you gotta come on in. I'm, I'm well. I'm trying. I'm, well, I'm trying. I'm trying. Yeah, don't try. Stop <laughs> trying. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sam is asking about entrepreneurship. Thank you. Thank He's you. asking a successful entrepreneur. You want to be a part of this conversation for some reason. Why do people insist on doing this? Like, if I want to ask about the movie business to Randa, I hope Roya doesn't stop talking about movies. So Roya's 18, and she's my shit about movies. <laughs> movies are good to watch. No, I got you. I got a question. You ready? All right. So we were talking about, you know, tapping into that stream, right? You first you develop that team that you need to, that, that strong foundation, the strongest. The soldiers to to facilitate this, this company, but as far as part of you know getting it off the ground, what what do you have to do to tap into that network of people who are yeah. you know who have the capital? So you got your team. Well, you still go back to the obviously you have still a team. Keep going but back to the investor side, capital. but I gotta tell you, if you're doing a good job, the investors will come because, uh, you know, I'll give you an example. You know, especially if you're first. It doesn't matter what kind of business you're in, by the way. Um, 
But let's mm-hmm. say you're you're in the pharma business and you say, look, I can't do this by myself. I have some ideas for some drugs, but I, I know I can't do this by myself. I want to hire a guy from Merck or a guy from Pfizer. And then you're going to count on somebody in your team. Somebody is going to have the relevant expertise of investor relations, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Somebody's going to say, I know an investor. Um and it might be the guy from Pfizer who knows one venture capitalist. But you sit in a room with your small team. Maybe it's two people. Maybe it's three people. Maybe it's 10 people. Maybe it's just one person. And you say, who here of us is the least stupid on the subject? <laughs> and, um, and whoever that person is, it's now their responsibility to do that thing. And more often than not, one of the best ways to find investors is through an investment bank. Uh, time and time again, entrepreneurs forget that there is a, a role in the world for this, for raising capital. People do this for a living. And you can find consultants and investment banks that will go find you investors. And you pay them a fee to do that. You, you pay them 6 7%. If you're really desperate for capital, you go find an investment bank and say, hey, I need a million bucks real soon, and I'll pay you 10%. And they'll go find some idiots to invest with you. And you can lower your valuation, right? You yeah. get out better terms. There's, there's always a way. So you got to go out there. But of course, you know, you, you hope that your team has a reputation. You, yeah, know, you need the credibility, the credibility to do that, to do that though. That, though. Uh, I'm not so sure, dude. You know, oh, uh, wow. Mark Zuckerberg went to Peter Thiel, got half a million dollar check. I think you, you just need. But he had like a million, million, million active, active like, like users like, almost. No, like, no. When he had 300 million active users, he was a multi-billionaire. Come on. I think so. But well, still, he was doing, doing the numbers. numbers. Nah. You know, you can, I, I, my friend came to me with an app idea. I gave him half a million dollars. It's the same, same deal that Zuckerberg and uh, Thiel had. So, you know, you, uh, you, someone who knows somebody, and again, an investment banker's job is to know people. Yeah. yeah. Right? Sure. sure. So... That's part of the network network, that you're speaking of, that team. team. Well, you know, you call up an investment bank and, you know, that's, that's that, you know, uh, know, people get funded every day. So in my job, we call those producers. Yeah. There's somebody who, who will put it together for you and they'll take a cut. Sometimes they'll take warrants, you know, they'll, they'll raise you, I don't know how much (laughs) capital you need, but they'll raise you 5 million bucks and they'll take 7% of the 5 million. So 350, and that'll take 7%, um, another $350,000 as if they invested in your company. Of course they didn't, but they'll take equity as well. So, you know, it's basically just, you know, finding capital. If Look, if you can't find capital, you're either doing one or two things wrong. You're not doing it intelligently, one or two, you don't deserve to be funded. And <laughs> confronting that reality sooner yeah. than later is, is a good idea. So a lot of people say, you know, um, I'm having a hard time finding capital. Unless you've talked to 100 plus accredited and institutional investors, you haven't tried. If, if you talk to over 100 accredited, in other words, high net worth or institutional investors, and you haven't been able to raise the capital you need, and you've been flexible on the terms you're offering, et cetera, you need to fold up that business. Or it will fold itself if you can't raise the money. So, you know, that's... All right. All right. That's, that's, that's good insight. Good insight. I, appreciate I appreciate that. that. Whole thoughts on the subject. Anyway. Yeah, just one, yeah, question, just one I question I had I about, had about uh, whenever people whenever do go to raise go capital, to raise um, capital um, um, how do you kind of stop, kind of stop venture, venture capitalists, capitalists from becoming vulture capitalists and kicking and you out of your own company and taking it over? Sorry. Like, uh, if you retain the majority of your board seats, seats, are you pretty much good, or are there still other ways? If you you have more than half the company, you're good. But I think you, as an entrepreneur, you have to know what you're kind of have to know what you're in it for as well. Like, you have to be realistic, you know. Um, you know, the Bill Gateses and the Mark Zuckerbergs of the world, Warren Buffett, Buffett. uh, yeah, all the above. I'm more thinking, like, yeah. You can include Buffett, but I'm thinking like startup y entrepreneur oh, types. Oh. Like, and he, you know, in many ways he was that too. But, you know, 
you just have to be like a little realistic. A lot of those guys, you know, they, 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 they'll tell you. I mean, they got lucky, you know. Um, and if you start a company and you raise $25 million and you're left with 5% of the company and you're crying, I would say that, you know, you're probably still pretty lucky. <laughs> you know, so sometimes you have to, sometimes you have to sort of be, uh, be a little bit realistic about who you are and what, you know, you know what you're trying to sort of accomplish. You know, if, if you are that, you know, focused on, on retaining all of that equity and it's your first company, uh, I think that that's, you know, probably just borderline focused on the wrong things. You know, there's the old saying, you know, I'd rather have 5% of something than 100% of nothing, right? Yeah, I've heard that before. Yeah, heard that. The only reason that, also, that, that, that Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. There's also there's a saying, also though, saying, slow though, nickel slow over, nickel a, fast over a fast penny. I like that one. Sure. I like that one. But, uh, you know, it's, if it's a difference between getting funded and not getting funded, you know, True. An, and it often is, you know, that's, you just got to, yeah, the reason I asked the question was that my parents, my their, parents first their first company, um, um, they ended up they getting, ended up getting they, they ended up having ended to just like kind of sell their shares. Sell. Oh, yeah. One of the richest guys the in richest Ireland, guys which kind of kind of sucks. sucks. And uh, since and, uh, then, since they've then decided they to just retain 100 percent ownership of ownership their new company. So like, it's slow growing, but it's not like anything that it used to be. Well, you got to check out the people you do business with too, and. No. Are your parents are your Max parents Azria? Azria? Are they, are they what? Are they what? Max Azria, Max your, father? Azria your father? I have no idea who that, no is, idea now. Who that is now. Okay, well, evidently it's not. He just got his company taken over by like Irish brothers. Oh God, that was a uh, that, uh, that, that happened then, like early two thousands. Yeah, it was kind of a while ago. But uh, yeah, no, that, those stories happen a lot, and I'm very loath to. You know, it's all, almost happened to me in my first company, Retrofin. Um, it's scary. It's difficult. You know, it's definitely, uh, you know, it's definitely hard. You know, you got to be super careful. You know, it's, it's a lot of it's first time stuff. A lot of it's legal agreements. You know, you got to be, you know, pretty, pretty smart when it comes to the legal agreements. All right. Double so we'll check those. And if you don't have experience, that's the easiest way to get through it. I mean, you just, you know. Pretty much you want to have like an iron like contract, contract that, that you've, you've, looked, you've, over you've looked over a lot. over a lot. Yeah, you have to have startup attorneys. And startup, startup attorneys out there are pretty good because eh, some of them are terrible. But, uh, so I'll take a step back. But if you go to a firm like uh, that's known for startups uh, and does a lot of startup work, um, and you have a good partner and you interview, you know, you interview lawyers and you say, oh, what, what startups have you formed that have been successful? And you, that person's formed at least, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 startups for venture capital companies. Um, you know, uh, and you can Google this stuff, you know, companies you look after who formed Square, who formed Facebook, you know, go to, I'm going to go to sec.gov, it's like Google Facebook formation lawyer. I wonder who was. Uh, uh, yeah, I just remember. I remember yeah, reading that. I had a hard time uh, finding it, but I was able to retain, to retain uh, control, uh, like control in like Facebook in whenever, whenever he was given well, those, board seats. Board seats. And, uh, yeah, that you know, there's, there's, there's certainly if you can get the terms, there's ways to get, um, you know, class A voting shares, things like that. All right. So Facebook's lawyers of record were Fen Fenwick and West. So I have a friend who's a partner at Fenwick and West. The other firm they had was Simpson Thatcher, which is a big firm. And they have offices in Silicon Valley. And trust me, they'll take, they'll do work for close to nothing. You know, they'll do work. Um, the startup my friend started uh, that I invested in, uh, I forgot what law firm it was, Goodwin Proctor maybe. They did the work for close to nothing. Um, you know, because the a lot of this formation, and Fenwick, actually it's funny, Fenwick represented me uh, in forming uh, this company and Goodwin represented him and the company and we negotiated a term sheet and um, it probably cost me like 25 grand. It probably cost him like five grand because my lawyers charge me full fees because they know I'm a rich guy and 
his lawyers probably charge him much less because they know he's a startup and he's got to focus on his business and they hope that he, they're paying it forward. You know, if he's in the next Facebook, then, you know, they're going to, Goodwin and Proctor is going to have another huge client. So, um, you know, it's sort of like, you know, and you got to, you got to, you got to be hat in hand when you go to these guys, you got to inspire them and say, look, I really think I got a new big idea. I just can't pay too much on formation fees. You know, as soon as I do my series A, then I'll pay you double. You, know, you got to be pretty, pretty clever about how you get good legal advice. And you definitely don't want to do it yourself or use a budget firm or anything like that. I think you want to go with a big law firm that knows what they're doing. Okay. Thank you very much for answering those questions. Much, uh, I really appreciate it. Sure, dude. Yeah. Um, all right. Enjoy the rest of your night. I'm going to get off. Let someone else on.